Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for coming together today for this uh, Bible study. In the new year, I believe that you are going to be faithful as you come regularly and the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. We're going to rise up together as we pray together. And I want you to really commit yourself to the Lord that today the Lord will bless you and make you a blessing even in this new time and new year in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time and bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for how you've made us to go through the previous year, last year, Lord, all the water that went under the bridge and yet to sustain us and kept us alive as individuals, as families, as communities and members of this church. Lord, we bless your name for what you've done for us. The people that you preserved in this headquarters church and all the people who are here and those in the various districts and all the people in the various regions in the whole country. Lord, we glorify you. Accept our praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we're bringing everyone before you. All our members and all the believers and all the children of God, all those who are cooperating with us and studying with us, Lord, not just in Nigeria, but all of Africa and outside Africa. Lord, we pray your blessings will be abundant upon everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray as we are preparing us for your coming, we will not fail. We will not fall. Lord, we pray that everything will be according to your perfect will. We pray, Lord, that this very day, you enlighten us and open our eyes and open our hearts. Make us to have real understanding in your word. And as we have this this understanding, Lord, we pray that everything you expect us to do and be will do and be this new year. Once again, Lord, bless us in the study of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at the word of God today. As you know, we started just uh, last uh, Monday about uh, this false Thessalonians. And we're coming back to it now. We studied already verses 13 all through to 18. I'm doing something today. I'm coming back to this verse 17 and verse 18. Read along with me. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're looking at verses 17 and 18. It says, Then we which are alive, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Already was talking about the rapture. That's the rapture of the church. And you know that as we talk about the rapture of the church, we've seen the examples in the Bible, the example of Enoch, the example of Elijah, and then the Lord Jesus Christ himself, after he rose from the dead, he appeared to all the people that uh, believed in him 40 days, and then he was taken up. And so we understand the rapture is a reality, and it's going to be a reality for the church of the living God, the people who are alive alive in Christ, alive in righteousness, alive in the presence of the Lord, is the word of God says, we shall be caught up together with the people that have risen from the dead. And then it says, we shall forever be with the Lord. Look at that verse 17 again, as it says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That, that's the part we're looking at today when it says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Have you thought about that ever? That is, to be with the Lord forever and ever. Which means that we're going to another place apart from where we are now. Our sojourn here on earth is temporary. Our abode in heaven is eternal. Heaven is an amazing, delightful place. It is called in the word of God. It's called heaven. Not only that, number two, it's called the heavenly city. Number three, it's called the heavenly Jerusalem. And it is called the better country. Number five it's called the dwelling place of God and then it's called the eternal heavens. It's also called the new heaven wherein dwelleth righteousness. That means then the Lord is telling us after finishing here on earth we're going to be forever 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 with the Lord and this everlasting kingdom which Satan and all his demons cannot enter because they are forever excluded. What a wonderful place it will be. That's what the word of God is saying over here and 
it says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I believe that's your own desire. That's your passion. And that is why you have come to know the Lord. In fact, that's why Jesus came into this world and then he took us away from our sin. He took our sins away from us. And he says, I'm preparing you for a place, a glorious place. Do you remember the promise of God? He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And then he said, and when I go and prepare that place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That is what this passage is emphasizing. It's telling us that when he comes, that he's going to take us to himself. Even then, as we look at it today, it's outstandingly glorious. An eternal place with no sin. Think about that. A place with no no sin and no sickness, no sorrow, no suffering, no death, no sea, no sun, no moon, no night, no demons, no Satan. What an awesomely delightful place that will be. A place where there's no Satan, there's no sin, there are no evil spirits, there is no suffering, there's no sickness, there's no death. It must be a wonderful place. That's what I'm telling you that this year you're preparing yourself. Because we don't know when the Lord will come. Once the rapture takes place like this, then we are gone. I pray you'll be one of us in Jesus' name. Now, an exceedingly delightful country it will be. It's eternal. It's everlasting. It's forever. It's so beautiful. It's so glorious. And it is blissful. Not only that, the way that leads to heaven. What if you just knew that heaven is a wonderful place, a glorious place, a delightsome place, and then we don't show you the way to get there but the word of god is very clear and the word of god says the way that leads to heaven is called the narrow way and it's described as the highway of holiness to get on the way to heaven and travel there all we have to do is one two three number one we are to leave the broad way number two we are to believe on the lord jesus christ as our personal lord and savior and then number three we have a definite act of faith receiving jesus christ as our lord and savior depending on him alone as our right to go to heaven you see there are people that think they can walk their way to heaven they turn over a new leaf you understand and they, if their good works are better and richer and greater and their bad works, then they're going to get to heaven. There's nothing like that. You cannot get there by yourself. You cannot pull yourself up by the straps of your boots and say, I'm going to heaven. It's going to take the grace of God, the mercy of God. It's going to take the forgiveness of the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying, that we turn away from our sins and we get out of the broad way and then we say, we're going to this glorious place in heaven and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross of Calvary so that we can be saved. It is that act of faith. It's that believing at a definite moment, at a particular time. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ that gets us there. I pray that if you have not taken that step, if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not turned over your life unto the Lord totally, completely, without any reservation, I pray that this night you will do it. Amen. And as you do it, the Lord himself, he'll take your hand, he'll say, yes, your sins are forgiven, you'll feel the joy of salvation, and then the turning around of you become a new creature, if any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things have passed away, and then it says, all things have become new. What a glorious in this new year, your life becoming new. This glorious, your thoughts, your mind, your life, your companionship, everything around you becoming new. That is the way to go there. Once we get to heaven how long shall we live there well i've read it to you already we're going to live there for eternity the bible says forever and ever and ever there it's a time that has no end we're going to be there forever endless life in heaven eternity is time without end this life however long it may be some people live 70 years or 80 years even 100 years even 150 years however long your life may be here on earth it is Till a preparation for eternity. We must see the value of this brief life and avoid the folly of a wasted life. Let us realize then the fact of eternity and go forth every day with a peculiar determination in our hearts to live with eternity in view. As I told you, you've seen it on your turn already, we're talking about forever with the Lord in heaven. And now we're going to divide to three 
three parts. Number one, our eternal residence with Christ in heaven. Eternal residence with Christ in heaven. Number two, all the residents and companions in heaven. Who else will be there? We know that by the grace of God, because of his forgiveness, because of salvation, you are planning to be there. Who else will you see there? That's point number two. All the residents and companions in heaven. And then I come to point number three now. Our eternal rewards and comfort in heaven. When we get there, because by the grace of God, we are getting there. You are getting there. I'm getting there. We're getting there together. And all our converts, as we're reaching out now in evangelism, and we're talking to other people, touching this life, and touching that life, and touching that life, and bringing them into the kingdom they, themselves and us we're going to get there together in jesus name what will be your reward and your comfort when we get to heaven the lord saying well done good and faithful servant you've been faithful in a few things i'm going to give you great great rewards in heaven that will be yours in jesus name i come to point number one our eternal residence with christ in heaven what would we come back to that same first thessalonians chapter four and we're looking at verse 17 there. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're looking at verse 17. It says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. See that? He'll come. He'll open the sky. And while he's coming, instead of coming to stay here on earth, like he stayed on earth three and a half years, when he first came, the second time when he comes, coming for the church, rapturing the church, taking the church away, catching the church away. We're told that he will meet him in the clouds. And you look at the latter part of that, verse 17, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. It will be with the Lord. Then we're looking at, um, at Luke chapter 24. Open your Bible with me. Luke chapter 24. And you might even want to mark some of these parts of the Bible because some of these things you have never thought about so deeply before. In Luke chapter 24, we're reading from verse 51. It says in verse 51, and it came to pass while he blessed them. He was parted from them and carried up into heaven. He himself he went up in rapture. He went up without sin, without uh, going through the grave again. He died, he was buried, and then he rose again, and then he appeared to all his disciples by many infallible proofs. He said, see my hands, see my son, and see that it is me. And this Jesus, this same Jesus, we're told, he was carried up into heaven and then we're told in acts of the apostles chapter one the angels appeared when he went to heaven like that and then they revealed what's going to happen that this jesus christ whom you have seen go to heaven like this the same jesus not another jesus not a counterfeit jesus not a fake jesus not a deceiving jesus the same jesus he'll come again and i pray that at that time when he comes again to take his own people home you will be there in jesus name. We're looking at Acts chapter 1 verses 9, 10, and 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. I don't let anybody ever deceive you. You know some of these people, they don't understand. They have never read the Bible. They have never seen all these experiences the Lord is showing us. And they say, are you sure there's heaven? Are you sure there are angels? Are you sure there is God? Are you sure there is this or that? Look at this historical record that the people who saw him, when he went to heaven, they said, yes, we saw him. In fact, he was talking to us. He was revealing to us the things that would take place. And this and this and this, giving us commandment, giving us commission, and telling us this is the way to spend the rest of your life. All of a sudden, we just saw him going up like this, and they were looking and looking until he went into heaven. We know there is heaven, and I pray you'll be there in Jesus' name. You know, if you didn't know there is America, you'll never plan that you want to go to America. If you didn't know there is England, you'll never plan you want to go there. It's because we know there is heaven. And beyond any shadow of doubt, we know that he is there. And that his way is, is coming back for us. That's why we're saying we're making preparation. And whenever it will be, suddenly he'll just come. But let's come back to the story here. Look at verse 10. And while they look steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, they looked steadfastly toward heaven. 
It's heaven that you went. And then that's where you're looking. You're looking up every time. Lord, come, Lord Jesus. It's, it's a desire of your heart. It's a passion of your soul. And you're saying, oh, Lord, I don't want to miss this. I can miss any other thing in life. I can miss any other opportunity. But this one, the privilege and the possibility of getting to heaven, I pray you'll be there. And then it says, while they were looking up selfishly, behold, two men, actually two angels, stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye may men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. You see that? That's what I'm telling you. Don't let anybody deceive you to follow a false Jesus, a counterfeit Jesus, just a human being. And they are promoting themselves, building themselves up that they are the Jesus. Of course not. But this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven thank god that's the jesus i'm waiting for the one who saved my soul and the one who sanctified me and the one who filled me with the holy ghost and the one who healed me when i was sick and the one who has made life better much better the one that says i'll never leave you i'll never forsake his presence his power and his support and his sustainers is with us today that same jesus is coming back again and you're going to find that when he comes back we will be with him and let me still show you about this jesus where he is now what the bible is telling us and what the word of god is revealing to you tonight to tell you that there is a real place that is called heaven. There is a real place that we need to go after this life. Look at Mark chapter 19 chapter 16 rather. I'm reading from verse 19. Where's Jesus now? Where's Jesus now? Look at this. It says in Mark chapter 16 verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken these things unto, uh, had spoken unto them he was received up into look at the next word into heaven that's it into heaven and then we're to and he sat on the right hand of god he was received up into heaven and then he sat on the right hand of god now that's talking about jesus where he is now where he has gone and where he's seated and where he's not fulfilling his ministry now i want to read the next verse the next passage to you, and this one now connects us yes we know he's the way he went to heaven we know it's at the right hand of God right now. Now, where do you stand? And where is your place together with this Jesus who is now in heaven? You know this, but I'll read it to you all the same. We're looking at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We're reading from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled, brothers and sisters. What a comforting word that is. The things we see in life and the things that are going on now. And the Lord is saying, don't allow that to trouble you. Don't allow that to traumatize you. And don't allow that to even bother you at all. Remember when what suddenly the some of them said, there is no, no problem. There's nothing, nothing to worry about. We know that all this light affliction, persecution, or pain, or scarcity, or whatever is for a short time that's what the lord is saying do not let your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me if there's anything you need to do you need to check up whether you believe in god or not that you believe in god as your creator you believe in god as your redeemer you believe that this is the one that created you and the one that has recreated you and refashioned you and turned you around and changed your life all together that's why it says believe in god believe also in me that I'm your savior, your only savior. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except through this name of Jesus. Then it says in my father's house, verse 2, a many mansions, a feet were not so I would have told you. Then he said, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. Quietly, with, inside your heart there, quietly, inside your heart there. You know what you ought to be saying? You know, he went to prepare a place for me, even me. Whatever other people do, whatever other people do not do, if other people are not saying well i want to go there i'm saying i want to go there i'm sure you are saying you want to go there because i go to prepare a place for you and then he said in verse 3 and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again i told you before that when jesus says i will not a demon not a satan not an enemy not a man not a woman even the whole universe the whole earth when he says i will nothing can hinder him but you know what he said he said i will 
come again. The Lord is coming again. Very soon, suddenly, he will appear. And in fact, he says, he will come so suddenly, many people will not know that he has come. But he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, where I am. Think about that. Where I am. Where is he? We're read it already together. In Luke, he went to heaven. Where I am, where is he? Ready to knock of the apostles. Where is he? He's in heaven. Where I am, where is he? Ready to mark. And the Bible says there, he was taken up to heaven. And he's seated on the right hand of God. And he says, where I am in heaven, there ye may be also. He wants us to be in that same place. As you look at the Bible and you look at everything the Lord is saying about heaven, we can see the central fact of heaven is that the Lord Jesus Christ will be there. He is there in surpassing splendor and indescribable beauty. His countenance shining as the sun in its strength. Heaven, heavenly beauty and eternal excellence are combined in him. The risen Lord had a glorious body after, he, after his resurrection. His glorious body was not limited by time, by space, or by matter. He could enter a room when the doors were shut and when the windows were shut also. He could move about without the apparent physical exertion. And then it's a body that is a, a body that is suited to live in heaven. He went to heaven with that same risen glorious body and John later described his glory and his splendor. But earthly words will fail in being able to fully reveal heavenly, the heavenly wonders. And then he says, and we shall forever be with the Lord. It is glorious. It's wonderful. Indescribably wonderful. And yet it says that as glorious as he is, as wonderful as he is, that we are going to be forever with him. We shall leave this world either through death or by rapture. And when a believer dies, his soul and his spirit immediately goes to be with the Lord in heaven. That we know about a statement. When they were stoning me about to die, he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. That means then as you know he was about dying he saw the lord jesus christ and he said receive my spirit his body was still here to be buried that means that when a believer dies then his body is there to be buried but then his soul his spirit goes to heaven for believers death is the messenger of god that takes us to heaven the moment we die we're instantly in the father's house consciously enjoying all the glories of heaven and the comforting presence of the lord jesus we don't need a body any more than christ needed one before his incarnation immediately after death we realize there is light after darkness, immediately after death, we realize there's gain after loss. We realize there's strength after weakness, crown after cross, and sweet after bitter. And then we realize there's hope after fears, and sheaves after sowing, and the sun after rain, and sight after mystery, and peace after pain. Immediately, a, a believer dies, he just gets into the joy of the Lord. And he realizes that joy after sorrow, and calm after blast, and rest after weariness, sweet rest at last near after distant and gleamer after gloom and love after loneliness and life after the tomb now comes the weeping a distant prayer time but then after death comes the glad reaping now comes the labor hard labor but then comes the reward what a glorious thing that you are going to exchange every negative thing negative emotionally and negative spiritually and negative physically you are going to exchange Change all that was something beautiful and glorious and happy forever. You'll be with the Lord. And I pray that you will not miss this heaven. You'll not miss this heaven. Like the young people sang many years ago, if you miss heaven, you'll cry. And it's not just, just crying for five minutes or ten minutes. Think about a person crying without stopping. Crying without season for one year, for ten years, for a hundred years, for a thousand years, for a million years, for a trillion years, ever and ever and ever. And the very first that you knew you could have got into heaven just like that by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ but by carelessness, by negligence, by nonchalant attitude, a carefree attitude you miss it just like that when you could have gotten in there, the realization of 
that that you could have been in heaven if you were not there you'll cry for the whole of eternity i pray that that kind of carelessness or foolishness will not be your lord in jesus name some believers will be called to go to heaven by the way of death while others will go without seeing death at the rapture have you have you sung this song before oh joy and oh great delight should we go without dying no sickness no sadness no dread no crying cut off through the cloud with our Lord into the glory when Jesus receives his own. At the moment of the rapture, the bodies of those who have died believing in Christ will rise from their graves and then their souls and their spirits that have been in heaven will come from heaven and will be united, reunited with their new kind of body just like the Savior's body. And then we will live forever in fellowship with the Lord in heaven. Living saints will, will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And then we go to heaven to live forever with him. It will take place in a moment of time, in the twinkling of an eye. The rapture is the blessed hope of all true believers. And I pray that will be your hope. You will be there. You will experience together with the people of God in Jesus' name. And let us look at the word of God as it's telling us here that this is what he's going to do. And this is the experience we're going to have. I pray that none of us will, meet, will miss it in Jesus name. As we look at the word of God, we we'll see what the Lord himself has prepared for us. And we we'll see what we're going to have and what we're going to get. As uh, you go through this, we'll say, oh Lord, I don't ever want to miss it. I don't ever want to miss this glorious opportunity. And let's look at the word of God as the Lord is telling us that this is what is going to take place. We're looking at John chapter 17 verse 24. You see the desire of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he wants for you what he wants for me, what he wants for us we're not going to miss it in Jesus name in John chapter 17 John chapter 17, we're looking at verse 24, it says Father I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am could anything be clearer? You know, there are people, I, I, I don't understand why people can read this. Or maybe they are not reading their Bible. I think I must conclude they are not reading their Bible. Or if they are reading their Bible at all, they are just running over and running through. And, you know, I read 10 chapters today. I read 20 chapters today. And they do not understand what they are reading. If you understood what you are reading. And you see what Jesus Christ is saying. Jesus was praying to the Father in John chapter 17. Look at what he says in that verse 24. After praying for the sanctification of the believers sanctify them through thy truth that watch is truth and then he revealed the reason why he was praying for sanctification now he says in verse 24 father i will i desire this is my passion and this is what i want to see i will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where i am and then it says that they may behold my glory which which thou hast given me, for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world. It's so very clear then what the Lord is saying and what he wants to accomplish. I pray you'll be there. I said, I pray you will be there. You'll be there in Jesus' name. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8, which means that when we're absent from this earth, absent from the body, we're going to be with the Lord. In Second Corinthians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 8 there. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8. We're confident, I say. It's not that, you know, we're thinking, we're supposing, maybe it will, maybe it will happen, maybe it will not happen. Paul, the apostle, by the inspiration of the Spirit says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. It says the moment we are absent from the body, your soul, your spirit, absent from the body, will fly away. The tears will go to the very presence of the Lord. And I pray that that hope, will be in you. That desire will be in you. And that reality will come to you eventually. We're looking at Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. See the way Paul the Apostle expressed it. He says in chapter 1, verse 21, all through to verse 23, it says, for me to live is Christ. It says, what, am I living, what I'm living here, my purpose for living will be to serve Christ, to win souls, 
to tell sinners that Jesus Christ died for them. And to tell all these sinners that they don't have to perish. It says to live is Christ. That is, uh, it's not, um, it doesn't to live is self. To live is all for society. To live is all for my family. To live is just to make money. To live is just to have merriment. To live is just to have festivities here. He says, to live is Christ. And then he said, and to die is gain. Then he says in verse 22, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what shall I shall choose, I what not, I know not. He said, I see that glory of heaven. He is the person that has gone to the third heaven and to paradise. And he saw remarkable things, unbelievable things, incredible things. And then he said, the things I saw, there are no words for me to convey them. And because of, he said, I'm in a hurry. It's like I just want to get there. Now. But then he said, there's a lot to do here. Souls to win here. Sinners to touch there. The lost to recover. And the work of God to be done. Therefore, he says, on the one hand, I want to go now. On the one hand, I want to just get to heaven immediately. But, but then, on the other hand, all these sinners who are still roaming about all this people who do not know their left from their right i want to touch their lives and trust turn them around and bring them to the lord that's why it says what to choose i know not then it says in verse 23 look at this now and having the comfy having this uh, it says in verse 23 for i am in a straight between two having a desire to depart and to be with christ which is far better it says the moment i depart i get out of this place then i'm in heaven immediately it says which is far better then he goes back now to say but there's something to do here there's a ministry here and you don't, you don't be in a hurry you're going to spend eternity there a thousand years a million years and three million years and ten million years and a trillion years and ever and ever and ever you can afford to spend another 70 years another 30 years another maybe 50 years say, before you go don't be in a hurry when we eventually get there it will be forever and ever look at this verse 20 for never the less to abide in the flesh is needful for you profitable for you and having this confidence i know that i shall abide and continue with you all for your fortress and joy of faith it says that's the purpose i want to remain here for some time so i can do some more work for the lord we're coming to point number two now point number two other residents and companions in heaven if you go to a city and you are alone there you didn't know anybody no friend and no partner no wife, no husband, no child, and you're just all alone there. Then you go out and come in all alone together. You'll feel miserable. No matter what you have, the house is beautiful, and the ground is wonderful, and the streets are beautiful, and all this light over there, and the cars are just moving up and down. It's a beautiful city. The only thing is that you're all alone by yourself. You don't know anybody there. Nobody knows you there. You'll feel miserable. If you got to heaven, and there are no other residents there, just all alone by yourself. No matter how beautiful heaven is, how are you going to enjoy that heaven when you are all alone? That's why we're looking at the next point here, which is talking about all the residents and companions in heaven. We're coming back to this same First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm reading verse 17, verse 18. It says, Then we... Hey, look at that. It says it's not just you alone. It didn't say then I or then you alone by yourself. There are other people there. That's why the word of God says we. It says then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Listen to this. And so shall we. It didn't say, and so shall I. Of course, yes, I am included. You are included. But it's not just you alone. There will be no loneliness in heaven. You will not be alone there. It says, and so we shall ever shall be with the Lord. Then it says in verse 18, we are for comfort one another. Which means, you know, I'm telling my brother, you ought to be there. I'm telling my sister that you ought to be We're telling ourselves, we ought to be there. They are for comfort one another with these words. There will be other people in heaven. As we look at the inhabitants of heaven, that is the residents of heaven, that is the people who will be living in heaven with us. Some are there already and some are going to meet us when we get there and we're going to meet other people when we get there. Let's look at them. Let the scripture speak by itself. 
and show us the kinds of people, all those other people that will be there with you and with me and with us together, we're going to be there. It's talking about uh, this other residence in Luke chapter 2 verse 15. Luke chapter 2. We're looking at verse 15. It says, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherd said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this, this scene which is come to pass which the Lord has made known unto us. Remember the story here Jesus was born in Bethlehem and then an angel came from heaven and announced that, behold I bring unto you this day good news of blood tidings which shall be to all people and then when he gave them that announcement then host of heaven angels joined him and then they, they shouted the praise of the Lord and then it says in verse 15 and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven they went to heaven that means then when we get over there we see angels there myriads of angels there thousands and thousands and thousands of angels there they are residents in heaven they are waiting for you there my brother waiting for you there my sister and i pray you will be there with them in jesus name in hebrews chapter 12 i'm reading verses 22 and 24 hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22 here it tells us but ye are come unto mount zion unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. He's talking about heaven again, and he's saying that these are the people that will be there. And he says, you in particular now, when you eventually get, he says, and ye are come unto this heavenly Jerusalem. Then he says in that verse 22, and to the innumerable company of angels. Angels. Uh, you know, if I asked you, who is greater, an angel or the president of a country? Of course, to say angels are greater. Who is greater, the richest man here on earth or angels? Of course, angels are greater. Who is greater, the most knowledgeable, these professors and deans and all these great, great uh, philosophers? Who is greater, angel or these doctors? Who say God, angels are greater? Let me ask you a question. What if you are allowed to come and live in the same house? In the same compound with the president of your country. You say that will be a dream I never thought will come true. But think about this now. Angels that are greater and mightier and richer and more knowledgeable than all the men on earth, you are going to be forever with them. That alone shall make you to drop every sin. Just turn around and just say, Lord, I believe in you. Cleanse all my sins away. If this is the only thing, I'm going to live with angels in heaven. I want to get saved if you are not saved yet. And then if you are saved, it will make you to want to keep that salvation, that the possibility of going to live with angels in heaven. What a glorious thing that, that is. And it says, we're coming to an innumerable, uncountable company of angels. And then it says, in verse 23, and to the general assembly, and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and the spirits of just men made perfect. It's already telling you who your companions in heaven and the residents in heaven will be. Now, if you think about all the knowledge you have in the Bible, can I remind you that Enoch is there? You'll see him. And then can I remind you that Elijah, that prophet of fire, is there? And you'll see him. And people like Moses, like Joshua, like David, they are there. You'll see them. And Mary, Mary the Virgin, you'll see her. And then all those other people that are in the Old Testament and New Testament, you're going to see them. The joy and the glory. Not only that, I'm sure you've known some believers who have left before us. You loved them dearly when they were here with us, but now they are in heaven and they are rejoicing and they are waiting for you. They are waiting for you. And the Lord is saying that angels, God, Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord, and then all these great men, the patriarchs and the prophets, and then the people that have left us, uh, you know, they've gone to heaven and they're all waiting for us. What great, glorious sin that will be. You'll be there in Jesus' name. And 
if you are a child and you know your mother has gone there already if you are a child your daddy has gone there already or if you are a husband your wife has gone there already your, your wife and your husband has gone there already or if you are if you're a parent and then one of your children believing in the lord jesus christ and you sorrowed so much and you and, and they've gone there already they died before you and then you're saying will i ever see them again if you are born again and if you give your life to the lord and if you remain faithful to the Lord till the very end you will see them will see one another again in jesus name. That alone, to know that your son is there to know that your wife is there to know that your husband is there that give, that it keeps you going that keeps you saying i want to see them i want to see them and because you want to see them that's why the passion the desire the determination is in your heart that one day you'll be there too i want to remind you that our lord jesus christ our savior will not be alone there god the judge of all the earth will be there no, not with the stern frown of justice but with the loving smile of a father he will be there and lord promise that the pure in heart shall see god blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god all the pure in heart in all the generations of this world and all the denominations of the world the people that have been purified and washed and cleansed by the blood of the lamb they will be there too with christ in glory will be and there will be an innumerable company of holy glory shining angels ministering spirits who have searched the ears of salvation every believer has a guardian angel the bible tells us that we will meet our guardian angels in heaven and hear how they were responsible for narrow escapes and miraculous deliverances and protection from unknown dangers when we were here on earth though exalted in position these celestial beings will only be spectators to the joy of our salvation when we get there and we celebrate that we went through temptation and through trial sickness and pain and persecution and now we are there in heaven they have never experienced uh, sickness or sin or persecution or pain and when we are telling a story how the grace of the lord sustained us and now we're in heaven well you know will be so they'll just be spe spectators watching like this that when we tell those stories the church will be there that is the church of the firstborn that is the assembly of saints the assembly of forgiving people the assembly of righteous people the assembly of people who have been washed from their sins they will be there the general assembly and the church of the firstborn whose names are reaching in heaven where will fellowship with the ransom from every nation every tribe every people and every tongue the apostles will be there the martyrs will be there as well as god's hidden ones who were not in the limelight but search the lord faithfully all the believers of all the ages will be there singing praises of his uh, to the glorious one who has saved us and then those who died in faith they will all be there we will sit at the table with abraham isaac and jacob as well as moses elijah peter paul and many others we shall recognize everyone the same way that peter and james and john recognize moses and elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, and when in the mansions above, the saints all around me appear, I want to hear somebody saying, it was you who invited me here. That it's not just these people that you have never met, that you're going to meet, your own converse too will be there. But if as we get to heaven, nobody to say, you helped me to get here, you took my hand, you encouraged me, you patiently explained the word of God to me, you evangelize and that's the reason i'm here now if that never took place when you get over there how miserable you are likely to but if when you get to heaven somebody said do you know you are the one that witnessed to me you are the one that preached to me you are the one that brought me here you are, you are the you are the one that made me to be able to get to heaven what joy that will add to you and what pleasure what splendor that will add your reward in heaven i pray that you will be there your converts will be there your people will be there your parents will be there if your mother is not born again yet your daddy is not born again yet your children are not born again yet what a glorious day it will be this new year that you go to them and touch their lives and do whatever you need to do so that they will see the importance of repentance the importance of holding on to jesus christ as their personal savior they'll see the importance of becoming new creatures in christ 
Jesus by his grace and power and strength turning their lives around that they become new creatures so that when the trumpet shall sound you and them you and us will be there together in Jesus name. let's look at number three now our eternal rewards and comfort in heaven eternal rewards and comfort in heaven. we're coming back to first Thessalonians chapter 4 first Thessalonians chapter 4 and I'm reading there from verse 13 verse 17 verse 18 three verses verse 13 verse 17 and then verse 18 open your Bible please quickly look at this in uh, four, chapter 4 verse 13 but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that she sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Other people, those who don't know about heaven, when somebody dies, they don't know about the comfort in heaven, about the rewards in heaven, about the commendation in heaven, and about the very fact that, that is the end of all believers. But then those of us who know, it says, you will not be sorrowful as the people that you not have any hope. Look at verse 17. Then we which are alive, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and to meet the Lord in the earth and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You know, even reading it, apart from preaching, just reading it and knowing that I will ever, ever be with the Lord and our things are not going to remain as they are on us now. And you reading this and seeing this and knowing that when Christ comes, you're going to be there. What a glorious thing that will be. Then in verse 18 it says, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another with these words. And I pray that the comfort will be yours in Jesus. Let's look at then uh, sorry, first, as Colossians chapter 1 verse 3. Colossians chapter one we're looking at verses three four and five colossians chapter one we're looking at it from verse three we give thanks to god and the father of our lord jesus christ praying always for you since we heard of your faith in christ jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints all the saints you have love to all the saints and then you have concern for all the saints. that's why the reward will come our rewards when we get to heaven our comfort when we get to heaven the saints who have prayed for the saints who have helped the saints who have encouraged and the saints that you have you have held their hands so have said, don't get discouraged let's keep on moving when they had problems and challenges and they were you know slacking back and wanting to withdraw wants you to achieve you said no don't do that we can make it we can do it we can achieve it together you remember i told you in the retreat that the team is together everybody accomplishes more and then when you encourage them like that then they rose up and were strong again in the strength of the lord when we get to heaven because of that because of what you have done you also share in the reward and comfort look at verse 5 for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven the hope which is laid up for you in heaven there are some rewards you are going to get on earth but you're not going to get every all the rewards here on earth there are rewards laid up for us in heaven whereof ye heard before in the words of truth in the of the gospel that means then the time is coming when that reward will be yours and then you say praise the lord what a great thing to be in heaven because of the comfort because of those rewards we're looking at uh, hebrews chapter hebrews we're looking at chapter 10 from verse 34 we're talking about you we're talking about your companions in heaven your comfort in heaven now we're talking about the the commendation we're talking about the reward and the things the lord will be giving us when we'll get over there to heaven heaven in uh, hebrews chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 34 hebrews 10 verse 34 for ye had compassion on me in my bonds that's why the lord is going to reward us the people that suffer the people who are persecuted the people who are facing challenges in life you know persecution and pain imprisonment or sickness or whatever and you are the one that will touch their lives where is brother so and so where is sister so and so is he getting discouraged is he getting persecuted is he having some challenges does he have something to eat does he have something to wear this time the beginning of the year why is he not out here or maybe he's out here and then you see him he's sorrowful he's sad then you go to him and we will touch each other's lives or hospitality help you lifting up one another and he says he had compassion on of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods knowing that knowing in yourselves that ye have 
in heaven, a better and an enduring substance. You see that? The reason why we do that, why we're giving helping hand to this and the man that is going from Jerusalem to Jericho and then has been kind of uh, left half dead, we're touching their lives and we're lifting them up and we're taking them to a place they can be taken care of and we'll say, whatever you spend, we will give it back to you. The reason why we're doing that is that one of these days after we go up there, we're going to get our rewards and I pray that you'll not go to heaven empty handed in Jesus name. You know the people that it's only themselves they're thinking about they're not touching other people's lives they're not comforting other people, lifting up other people. They eat all their food alone they wear all their clothes alone they spend all their money alone and they're not using what they have got, their money their talent, their ability, their skill and their treasures and their food they're not using what they have got to help other people but the people are going to be rewarded in heaven. If you know there's seven, I'm sure you know there's seven and you know that one of these days we're going there and it will not be long. The trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord and because we know that, that's the reason why we're touching other people's lives, we're helping them, we're encouraging them and we're praying for them and we're giving them substance, so part of our substance because of that we're going to be rewarded and we're going to have great, great commendation in heaven that's why it says in verse 35 in verse 35 it says cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward great recompense of reward uh, are you thinking about that you know what you do today will be rewarded tomorrow what you do this week will be rewarded next week. what you do in this life will be rewarded in the life to come then it says for we have need of patience that after we have done the will of god will ye might receive the promise for yet a little while and he that shall come will come for yet a little while, just a little while, and he that shall come will come. Uh, you know, when last year started, I mean last year, 2010, when it started, it appeared it's very, very long. But you know now, December that the force is behind us. And now this much of force is gone. And now here we are today, just like that, Think of an eye, it's gone. And that's what he's saying. He that shall come, he will come. We think that your know, life is so long and all, but it's not that long. It's not that long. That's the reason he said, while you are here now, whatever you can do, whichever life you can touch, whoever you can help, whoever you can encourage, and whichever soul you can preach to and bring them to know the Lord, what a great opportunity you have, what a great opportunity you have in this new year. Do not allow this new year to pass again like last year is now gone. And then you say, the good things you could have done, the lives you could have touched, and the hungry you could have fed, and the naked you could have clothed, if you didn't do that then, the Lord is giving you another chance, saying, rise up, touch other people's lives, encourage other people, because it will not be long that Lord Jesus, he will come, and he will take us home. Look at that verse again in verse 37. Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Then he says the challenge we have then is to see all the good we can do today, all the lives we can touch today, all the people we can turn around today, so that by the grace of God, they will never be the same again in Jesus. Let's look at First Peter. This reward, and sometimes there are people say, "Well, I've done good. I've helped people, and I can't see the reward." What do you mean? It wait. You are going to see reward at the end of life when the rapture has taken place, and when you have gone up there, it's like you know a, a child that is going to school. I've studied all I can study, and there's no certificate. Wait, keep on studying because the certificate will come at a particular time. So don't ever say, "I've helped people, I touched people's lives, I fed the hungry, and I clothed the." naked and I encourage the people who are discouraged and I try to touch the lives of those who are sick and I try to bring them uh, to help and then what reward am I getting? The reward is coming. You will not miss your reward in Jesus name. It's reserved for us in heaven. My brother, my sister, if you got all the rewards here everything the Lord will ever give you. What are you going to have when you get to heaven? What are you going to have when you get there in eternity? The Lord is saying, yes, I'm helping you now, I'm blessing you now, I'm healing you now, I'm delivering you now, and providing for you now, but there's still yet more to come. First Peter, we're looking at chapter, chapter 1. First Peter, chapter 1, I'm reading there from verse, I'm reading there from verse 3, verse 3 to verse 5. Blessed 
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has begotten us unto a lively hope. What hope we have now that, you know, this life is not, is not everything. The sorrows here, the challenges here, the temptations here, the trials, this is not everything. There's still yet more to come. And he says, he has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Listen to this, listen to this. Reserved for you in heaven. That is incorruptible inheritance. Unfading inheritance. The inheritance the Lord is going to give us. And it says it's reserved for you with your name attached unto it. And it's saying every time you win a soul, there's something reaching out for you. Every time you, you know, give a, you know, an offering for uh, the work of God to God, there's, a, there's something reserved for you. Every time you encourage a discreet person, every time you lift up the people that are falling, every time you have a smile, every time you're helping people to say, get up. Now we can do something for the Lord and then because of you, because of your encouragement and because of your partnership they're doing something for the Lord there's something that is rich in heaven for you and it says over here it's a reward, it's an inheritance it's an incorruptible sin undefiled that fadeth not a way reserved in heaven for you then in verse 5 it says who are caged by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. I pray it will be yours in Jesus name. You know heaven will be a place of rewards given out by the Savior himself. Over the centuries he has been keeping minute, accurate and complete records of every, th every good thing that we have done. Every good word we have spoken. Every life that we have touched and every body we have brought into the kingdom. Everything done for Christ will brought to light. His kindness will repent the kindness of his people. Heaven is a place where the believer's life and service will be reviewed and rewarded. Faithfulness will be rewarded rather than success. What I mean by that is, you know, sometimes we go out and we talk to people, come to know the Lord, we show them the love of God. Some of them do not respond. And maybe no convert even came that day. Will you still be rewarded for that day? There was no success, but there was faithfulness. And because you faithfully did what you ought to do, the Lord is going to reward your faithfulness. Don't say, what's the point? We even go out, they'll not even respond. And we go out and, you know, what they do, they just, uh, you know, shun us and slight us. And they just, uh, you know, turn, the other, turn to the other side. The Lord told Ezekiel, says, son of man, I've appointed you to be a watchman over the house of Israel go out and tell them and then he said even if they will not hear even if they will not respond he says still tell them all the same what I need is your faithfulness what I need is that you have obeyed me and I'm going to reward that faithfulness therefore you need to go out you need to tell other people don't look at you know they are responding they are not responding after all somebody who is not responding today may respond tomorrow you know something that happens sometimes brother A has gone to tell the this man about the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to know the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. And this is the moment of decision. You need to be born again. And the fellow did not, you know, pay any attention. But after you left him, after brother A left her, that man, he began to think, this my soul and this my kind of life. Am I going to die like this? All of a sudden, another person comes, brother B comes to him and he says, I want to tell you something. Life is urgent and this decision is urgent. And while brother B is talking to him, he remembered what you, brother A, told him some days ago and some weeks ago and now he gave his life to the Lord. You know, both brother A and brother B will have reward for that person getting converted. It is not the person that will say closes the sale. That actually does it. Because all the other, they created awareness, they created interest, they created passion, they created desire. And then finally now, somebody comes and he made the decision, final decision possible. All the people that contributed along the line from awareness to desire to passion and to interest until the final decision, all of us who are going to have the reward. And I pray that you understand this every time and then the reward will be yours in Jesus' name.
I'm going to read that again on our outline. Faithfulness will be rewarded, not just success. It is not the amount of gift or the ability we have, but how we have used it for the Lord that will be rewarded. The word of God makes us understand that the desire to is rewarded even as even when it's impossible to accomplish. Do you remember David? He wanted to build a temple, a tabernacle for the Lord, a sanctuary for the Lord. And then he wasn't allowed. He was not able to build it. But the Lord still said, because that desire was in your heart, I'm still going to give you a reward also. That means that even though David was not able to accomplish what he said he was going to do, he had the passion the desire and the interest to do that because of that the reward came the same thing with you all the desires and the consecration and that lord if i have the chance i'm going to do this for the glory of your name and then the rapture happens before you're able to do it and then that is still rewarded i pray that god will remind us all these things and we're going to be faithful to the lord in jesus name it is not how we evaluate our service but how the lord himself evaluate seed that counts no good thing done for the lord and for his glory is insignificant it will all be rewarded you can't say well that's a little thing that doesn't of course it matters of course it matters whatever we do it matters and what comfort will be ours in heaven we will see our Lord. One glimpse of him in glory. Will all our earthly toils repay? And not just merely one glimpse, but we shall behold his glory forever in heaven. Christ will be the fountain of deep, sweet well of love and comfort. God himself shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There will be no more crying or pain or death in that eternal home of everlasting gladness and in the immediate presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And that show will be there even now before we even get there. It brings joy in my heart that I'm going there and that you are going there too. We'll be there together in Jesus' name. And let's look at Luke. Luke chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 22 and 23. Let's see what the Lord Jesus Christ said about this heaven when we eventually get there because we are getting there in Jesus' name. Look at uh, Luke chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 22 and verse 23. Luke chapter 6. Open your Bible, please, very quickly. Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when men shall, when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and live for joy. For behold, your reward is great on us. No, great in heaven, because of the persecution you endure. And because you stood for righteousness, and because you stood for holiness, and yet the people, they ridiculed you, and the people, they rejected you, and they put pain and pressure upon your life. All the same, the Lord says, he's going to reward you, and great will be that reward in glory in Jesus. And then he says, look at verse 23 again. He says, great will be your reward in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. And that means then the joy and the comfort and then the pleasure that you're going to have, the splendor you're going to have when you get there, what a glorious great thing that will be. Luke chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 22. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. In verse 22 here we're told, and it came to pass, a beggar died, I was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell lift up his eyes, being in torments, and saith Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. What joy and what great comfort. When Lazarus died, then the peace that came, the joy that came, and then the, the uh, comfort that came. Uh, it was so, so glorious that now it says, and the rich man who went to, he looked up, and then he saw Abraham afar off, and then he saw him, and he saw this uh, Lazarus in his bosom. And see what happened here? He said, send this, uh, and he am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things 
sins but likewise Lazarus evil sins now he is comforted and thou art tormented the glory of the very fact that when you get there the comfort and the joy it will be a glorious sin I said it will be a glorious sin in the presence of the Lord there will be joy forevermore I'm looking at um, Psalm 16 Psalm 16 and let's see what the Lord is saying that when we eventually get there what a glorious thing that will be we're looking at Psalm 16 verse 11 thou will show me the path of life show me you know David personalized it. he said this is mine and i'm going to have it and you two can talk like david after you know the lord as your personal savior your sins are taken away and then your heart has been cleansed he gives you clean hands and a pure heart and he gives you that holiness without which no man shall save the lord and because of that you are able to say that when that glorious sin shall come i am going to have life forevermore look at that verse 11 that will show me the path of life in thy presence is the fullness of joy at the right hand there are pleasures forevermore pleasures forevermore but you know in this world uh, sometimes there are ple pleasure in the world but pleasure after that pain pain and pleasure pain and pleasure always so twenty in our lives but then when we get to heaven the pleasure will be forevermore without any interruption of pain at all and that's why the lord is saying that he is coming and because he's coming we're going to have that untold and unending pleasure and peace at his presence. We're looking at Psalm 17, verse 15. Psalm 17, we're looking at verse As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in thy likeness. I pray you'll be there. I said I pray you will be there. Let's look at Colossians. Colossians, we're still talking about the comfort we're going to have and the reward we're going to have, the compensation we're going to have, and the commendation we're going to have, all reserved in heaven for us. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 23 and verse 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men, knowing that the Lord, knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive what? Tell me out loud. You'll receive the reward of inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. We're going to receive, I'm going to receive, and you are going to receive. We will receive together in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11. We're reading there from verse 24. Hebrews chapter 11. Reading there from verse 24. This has made the hope of the patriots, the hope of the prophets, and the hope of the people that went before us. And this is still the hope of the children of God today. Those of us who will read the Bible, will believe the Bible, we know the Bible, and we know that these things are true without any shadow of contradiction. Because the Lord has said that He will do this and is going to do it. And what a glorious thing you are going to be a partaker. I'm going to be a partaker. And the church of the living God will be partakers of this in Jesus' name. The comfort and the commendation and the compensation and the reward for the people that have lived righteously all the days of their lives in faithfulness by the grace of God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24. Here is telling us uh, what's going to happen. Hebrews 11. I'm reading from verse 24. It says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Here we're talking about the consecration that he made. The commitment that he made. And the Lord is telling you in this new year, what, com what uh, kind of consecration you ought to make. And then devoting yourself to the Lord. The Lord has a task, a work to be done. The labor of love, touching the lives of many other people. And the Lord is saying, you've seen other people. People like Abraham, that even gave his only begotten son. And people like Moses, that gave up all the privileges of being the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And then Paul, the apostle, that he said, I profited in the Jewish religion more than everybody else but then when the lord called me and he called me to his service he said i did not confer with flesh and blood and the same thing the lord is telling you today concerning this moses he said he was willing look at verse 25 choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season what happened to him and how did he think and how should you be thinking and what attitude should you have look at verse 20, 26 
esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He had respect on the recompense of the reward. Revelation, I'm looking at chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, we're looking at verses 3 to 7. It is telling us about what is going to happen at the end of the day, at the end of life. After the rapture has taken place, the reward you are going to have, and because of this great reward you are going to have, that's the reason the Lord is calling you now that this is the time to consecrate, and this is the time to yield your life, and this is the time to lay everything upon the altar for his salvation vision of souls because if you don't do it now the opportunity will be lost forever after the rapture has taken place and then the sinners they've gone to hell the sinners they have perished and they're going to suffer forever and forever and the lord is telling you have the mind of christ on the heart of christ and the compassion have compassion on them because it is that compassion that will be rewarded with great comfort and with great compensation and great commendation look at it the reward we are going to have the reward i should say the reward you are going to have because they are going to have that reward in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 22 of Revelation. Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 3. It says, And there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face. I will see his face. How about you? will see his face in Jesus' name. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads and there shall be no more night and there shall be no night there and they need no candle neither the light of the sun for the lord god giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever can i read that last part to you again it says and they and they me included you included us included the church of the living god the people who are born again the people who are saved the people who have been washed in the blood of the lamb and then by the grace of god they live in newness of life turning over a new creature now serving the lord and touching lives and bringing them to know the lord and the joy of their lives is just to see one soul saved maybe every day it was dl Modi that said every day he'll not go to bed and go to sleep without winning his soul to the lord and the people People that take that kind of decision that kind of commitment they are the people it says over here and they and they shall reign forever and ever and then in verse 6 and he said unto me these saints are faithful and true and the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. The Lord is coming. And when the Lord comes, the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we which are alive will be risen together, caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever, ever be with the Lord. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saints of the prophecy of this book. I pray you'll be among the people that keep it in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. What kind of work? The work you have in, uh, you know, having your daily living employment. No, it's talking about the work of soul winning, the work of witnessing, the work of serving the, the spiritual assignment that we have, bringing souls into the kingdom, establishing them, discipling them, and training them, and teaching them, baptizing them, and then turning them to become disciples themselves that go out to reach out to other people. That's what it means when it says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward. Word is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they which do his commandments. I pray you'll be one of those people. You hear the commandment, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Blessed are they that do his commandments. You hear his commandment that says you love one another, even as I've loved you, and then you do the blessed day that do his commandments. 
life you hear it says that blessed are pure in heart for they shall see the lord and say lord i'm going to be that my heart my thoughts my mind my will my personality everything about me the day in the night every moment of the day i'm going to have that purity of heart by faith in christ it says blessed are those that do his will his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city then he says in verse 15 what a pity for these people those who are never cleansed those who have not been born again those who have not repented those who have not been washed those who have not been cleansed and those who have not had a new life in christ he said over here in verse 15 for without are the dogs and the sorcerers and who, and the allmongers and the murderers and the idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie i jesus have sent my my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root and the offspring of david and the bride and the morning star and the spirit and the bride say come you're not born again yet the lord is saying now it's not too late it could be too late if you delay more than this moment but today you can see give your life to the lord and if you knew the lord before you know all this is we've gone through the retreat time and we had all those wonderful messages in all our retreat grounds if you still have not given your life to the lord and you have not been restored into the kingdom the lord is saying the chance is still there and the door is still open you can come now the spirit and the bride say come and any if you're a believer and then you have not come you have not joined also and winning souls and reaching out and touching lives and bringing them out of their sin and then you have been you know sitting back and then you have been lazy and then you have been weak and you're not with all the fire the lord is putting in our heart and revival is building in our soul and you're still there the lord is saying it may be too late it will wait any longer but the lord is saying you can come now the spirit and the bride say come and let him that hear us say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will wonderful you know that's some part they don't understand they say they think only some specially selected people predestinated people can be saved but the lord said no the salvation is for you and the service of the lord is also for you whosoever will let him come and take the water of life how freely you can have it you'll have it in jesus name let's come back to you. first thessalonians chapter 4 First Thessalonians chapter 4, and the Lord has spoken to us today, saying that forever will be with the Lord. And I pray that forever you'll be with the Lord in Jesus' name. When the time shall come, when the trumpet shall sound, when the dead in Christ shall rise, that you too, you will be there. I will be there, you will be there, and we'll be there together in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. See what it says. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, and so, and so shall we ever forever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words forever with the Lord. Amen. So let it be. Lived from the dead is life from the dead is in that word it is immortality here in the body paint have sent from him my room yet nightly pitch my moving tent a day's march nearer home every day that passes by you get nearer home nearer home. my father's house on high home of my soul how near at times to face foreseen I thy golden gates appear my thirsty spirit faints to reach thee to reach over there and I love the bright inheritance of saints Jerusalem above if you love that if you are saying oh Lord that's my desire that's my passion and that is my commitment I want to be there forever with the Lord Father it is, if it's I will the promise of that faithful word even here to me fulfill be thou at my right hand then can I never fail uphold thou me so I shall stand fight and I must prevail. So, when my latest breath shall rend the veil in twain, by death I shall escape from death and life eternal gain, knowing as I'm known, how shall I love that word, how I love that word, and oft repeat before the throne forever, forever, 
forever, forever, forever with the Lord. The Lord is telling you to get prepared because the Lord is coming and we shall forever be with him. Why don't you stand up now and just commit yourself to the Lord. That you've heard about heaven. You have heard about the glory. You've heard about the splendor. You've heard about the beauty. Everybody rise up, rise up. And you tell the Lord, oh Lord, I want to be there. Come with me. I know that your grace will keep me and I know that your love will keep me. I want to be there, Lord. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer that you want to be there. We've spoken about heaven today, about that glory land today, about that land of beauty today, about that land of pleasure today. And the Lord is saying, that place is for you. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying, that place is for you. The Holy Ghost, the Comforter, He has come for you. And He's saying, I'm comforting, I'm helping you, I'm propping you up, I'm supporting you, I'm sustaining you, and I'm helping you in intercession and prayer so that you will be there, you can be there. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, it's not enough to just hear the word of God and to see all these beauties and the glories and the comfort and the compensation and the, and the commendation and the, and the things that we're going to have in heaven. You must tell the Lord, oh Lord, I want to be there. If you don't show the desire, does God know that you really want to get there? We ask, we have not because we ask not. We have not because we ask not. You ask the Lord, oh Lord, I want to be there. Lord, I want to be there. I don't want to perish. I don't want ever to go to the other side, to the left hand side. I want to get to that heaven. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. If there's any sin in your life, remember, no sin will be there. No sin will be there. No sin will be there. It's as you commit yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, wash me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, purge me. Lord, purify me. I want to be in heaven at last and believe that Jesus Christ died for you if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that jesus christ died for you and that he rose again for your justification the bible says thou shalt be saved for the word the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth the confession is made unto salvation tell the lord oh lord i want to be there oh lord i want to be i thank you lord because you died for me i thank you because you paid the whole price so that i'll be able to get to heaven and now i come and now i come and I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thank you for the joy of salvation and thank you for the peace that comes with salvation. Thank you Lord because of the change and the transformation that comes with salvation but not only that, I don't want to go alone to heaven. I want to get other people with me I'm committing my life. I'm committing my life to tell other people, to touch other people, and to turn other people around so that they too they'll be able to get to heaven. And don't, don't be selfish. Of course, if you're really saved, you're really born again, and then this joy of salvation is welling up in you now, and this peace of God is in your heart now. There's no way you like to be alone. You want to tell other people about the joy, about the change, about the transformation, about the things that the Lord has done for you, and the Lord God is saying, I've given you the word of reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation. Go tell other people. Go reveal to other people. They too can be saved. They too can be saved. Tell them how you were saved. Tell them how you, how, how you were saved. And then they also will do the same thing. And the Lord will bring that salvation to them. And then great will be your reward in heaven. And great will be all the comfort and all the commendation of the Lord. The Lord will say, because you've been faithful in a few things. Be thou Lord, or be thou master, be thou ruler over many things. Tell the Lord, in that new Jerusalem you'll be there. And it says, because I overcame, I'm seated with my father on the throne. If you also overcome, you're going to be with me uh, on my throne as well. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord that this year, you'll not spend this year empty handed. You're not going to, you know, just keep the message yourself, the good news to yourself. It's no more good news. When you selfishly sit on it, it's no more good news when nobody is hearing it. It is when other people are hearing. It's when you are telling other people and other people are saying, yes, now I've heard it. This good news and glad tidings, I'm coming to the Lord. I'm going to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and they're repenting and they're crying because of their sins and they're turning to the Lord and say, oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. The salvation you've given to this, my brother. The salvation you've given to this, my Give it to me too. I want to have this salvation too. It's when they are giving their lives 
presence of the Lord like that and then changes are taking place, restitution are being made and lives are changing, are being transformed. That is then you're going to have the reward here on earth and also in heaven. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't be a lazy Christian this year. Don't be an idol Christian this year. Don't be a national Christian this year. Be involved. Get involved and touch other people's lives and bring them to the Lord. Thank God. Thank God you are doing it. You are taking decisions and the Lord is recording all those decisions in heaven. Lord, this year I'll serve you. Lord, this year I win souls. Lord, this year I will live for the glory of your name. This year I'm going to do everything you are uh, impressing upon me to do. Not only that, I'm going to help other people to know you as well. The Lord will give you the grace. In fact, the Lord is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. Start where you are. Start in your home. That's for Jerusalem. Start in your community. That's for Jerusalem. Start in your local church. That's for Jerusalem. Start in your place of work. That's for Jerusalem. Start in your city. That's for Jerusalem. Then extend it. Start with the people you know. And then after that, the people you don't know. And touch their lives. And talk. Friend, can I talk to you about Jesus? Friend, can I talk to you about peace of mind? Friend, can I talk to you about the good thing I've discovered? And then you are extending us. And extending to other people. And as you do, multitudes will come to know the Lord this new year in Jesus name now every decision you are taking now and every prayer you are prayed now don't let it end here as you go even now in the bus and even now in the vehicle and even anywhere you are anywhere you are begin to touch other people's lives and then make it a habit every day that you'll do exactly what you are promised the Lord you are going to do and the grace of God and the presence of the Lord will go with you in Jesus name